Whether it's ramen, udon, or pho, noodles for me have always been a staple in the kitchen because there's nothing more satisfying than being able to craft an entire dish all in one bowl. So what I'm gonna be doing today is scouring the world of TikTok for the most viral noodle recipes out there. And of course, 99% of them are complete trash, but I am looking for those hidden gems where I can learn new techniques and taste new flavors and really strengthen my noodle knowledge. Ooh, my old friend Tiffy Cooks. Her chow mein recipe at 1.6 million. She was featured in the first episode of this viral series for her air fryer recipe, I believe. This is so good. Better than takeout, chow mein. Add in soy sauce, vegetarian oyster sauce, black vinegar, black pepper, pinch of sugar, a little bit of sesame oil mixed together. There's a theme I'm picking up with Tiffy Cooks, which I really like. Her recipes are extremely simple, but you do need some authentic pantry ingredients to get them right. So it's kind of like, you know, building them up one by one, getting the black vinegar, getting the sesame oil, whatever it is. But other than that, they, they come together very easily. Blanch the noodles for 60 seconds. Add in sliced onion, shiitake mushroom. Saute That's together for two to three minutes. Celery customizable here. there. Two minutes. Add in cabbage for another two to three minutes. Love that mix of, I, I don't know if that is like the traditional chow mein veggie action, but I like how many veggies are and in this the noodles, sauce, saute on high heat for another two to three minutes. Green onion, saute on high heat for another one minute. Look at that. Would you look at that? So simple recipe, but there's still technique. Just even adding those scallions in at the end. Tiffy Cooks knows what she's doing and I don't really make chow mein. I don't know if I've ever made an actual chow mein. So this is, uh, yeah, this is happening. So first up, say goodbye to this kitchen. This is the last time you'll see it in this shape. This is how the kitchen came. And I'll be making some changes over the next month, some big changes who give it a more pro home cooks aesthetic. Chow mein, first dish. And chow mein in English means fried noodle, but this actual dish has become one of the most popular Chinese American dishes out there. But I've actually never made it, which is why today is so exciting. So first thing, for pretty much all of these noodle dishes, they're one pot plus a pot to boil your noodles. So I'm just gonna get that going. Now I'm gonna be using a big old nonstick pan. I don't have a wok in the studio yet. I think Tiffy Cooks used a nonstick. Use whatever you've got that can hold a bunch of noodles. While the pan's preheating, we're gonna work on our veg. I'm first gonna slice up half an onion. And then what Tiffy Cooks did was she took her carrot and celery and cut them into thin strips. So I'm just following suit. Now for my shiitakes, I'm gonna slice off the woody base and then cut them into nice thin strips so they stir fry up pretty quick. And finally for the cabbage, which is really gonna bulk up this dish, I'm just gonna give it a rough dice. As Tiffy Cooks would say, would you look at that? That's a ton of veg prep, but it happened very quickly. So my pan is preheated. I'm gonna hit it with just some neutral oil. She started off with onion and then she went in with the shiitake. So I'll be cooking that for like three minutes. In the meantime, I should be able to crank out this sauce, which is pretty simple. All right, so Tiffy Cooks has a blog, which is great. So I can just copy her exact recipe. Three tablespoons of soy, oyster sauce. She used a vegetarian one. This is the real stuff though. Might not. <laughs> Fresh bottle. Come on now. Got a ticking time bomb with these mushrooms over here. Right in. And two and a half tablespoons. That looks about right. Three tablespoons of black vinegar vinegar, the good stuff. One tablespoon of sesame oil, one tablespoon of sugar, and then black pepper. Really simple sauce, you just gotta build up those pantry ingredients over time. Stir it up, taste, mm. pungent, delicious. Wow, that is great. Okay, sauce check. Now we're gonna go in with carrots, celery for about two minutes. And you know she's a good cook when she's very specific about when the ingredients go in. Because we wanna make sure the textures are right. So the last thing I'm gonna do is slice up. She did like a long, thin scallion. All right, carrots and celery, soft, but not overcooked. Still nice and tender. In with the cabbage. And that will take three minutes. So what I'll do now, get my noodles going. Also take about two or three minutes. And in you go. Nudes are coming along. Great, I, I just want to give water. it a try. You got it? Got it. Mm. Those are fantastic. What is yellow number five is the big question. <laughs> they have a good flavor. I don't know what that is. Um, these are done though. You want them a little al dente because they're going to cook in there. How can I do this with one hand? Ha! 
Now she had more noodles, so I'm just gonna control the amount of sauce at first to see what we need. Start off with that, save a little, and get frying, my friends. I mean, chow mein does roughly translate to fried noodles. I'm actually looking a little dry in this spot, so we're going in. And then finally, scallions. So look at that. You can see the noodles actually frying and caramelizing with that sauce, which I have a feeling is gonna add a ton of flavor. That is one hell of a little crispy spot right there. Oh. Oh my God. First noodle dish and I am freaking out right now. How good does that look? Mm. Oh, I can already tell that's gonna be addictive. One thing I really like is the dryness of the noodles. It's not lubricated like a pasta, but when it's dry, that's how you get that caramelization on those noodles. Pungent flavors, but the sweetness is balancing everything out so nicely, and the veg is perfect. This recipe is so simple to make, it will open you up to new pantry ingredients like oyster sauce, which is a new staple for me, so delicious. Well, thank you very much, Tiffy Cooks. All right, let's take a minute away from the recipes, I need to give you a little garden update because a lot has happened in the last few weeks. Foundational design. And the big thing is, whoa. Huge deer fence was installed all around the property. The deer in this area are crazy. I needed to protect my crop. So we've got this eight foot defense force right here. It goes all around the growing area and it opens up so much vertical space for growing. I also built these cedar garden beds and we're already rocking for some spring crop. Little arugula, lettuce. Remember the Asian pear trees I planted? We've survived the winter and we're sprouting. Very exciting. Some of the first signs of spring over here as well. I planted garlic in December and look what we have here. We've sprouted. Now starting this garden is really all about being in control of my health and what goes in my body, which brings me to the sponsor of today's video, Ritual. And I first heard about Ritual actually from my wife who obsessively took their prenatal and postnatal vitamins for both of her pregnancies and absolutely loved it. And since having a second kid, it's a little harder to stay on point with my diet and my home cooking. So Ritual can help me fill in those gaps, which really helps as I manage a growing family. And I love Ritual as a brand and product because transparency is really at the core of everything they do. From the way they source their nutrients to the environmental impact of materials used in the shipping process. It also comes one week before I run out every single month, which is great because I have a busy schedule and I really don't want to think about it. I just want it to show up. And the packaging is great. You can see right through the bottle and the actual pill, which is much more inspiring than your standard multivitamin and has really helped in making them an actual ritual in my life. So if you're interested in trying out Ritual, they're offering all of you 20% off your first month by going to ritual.com com slash pro 20 and using code word pro 20 at checkout. Now that you've got a little garden tour, we'll get back to some more recipes. So Korean black bean noodles, 2.9 million views from Stalin Spice. One of my most requested recipes is definitely jajangmyeon, which are Korean black bean noodles. And I'm gonna show you how to make them just as good as the restaurants do. Pro tip number one, score your pork belly. This is gonna render out the fat more evenly. It's going to create- These are the gems I'm looking for where you find just little techniques in these TikToks, traditional techniques that the viewers can benefit from. Not just like chaos going into a bowl. A very tender pork and it's also going to develop more flavor in the oils that we will be using to saute our onions, potatoes, zucchini, and cabbage. A common mistake I see when people are making jajangmyeon at home is that they're not frying the black bean paste in enough oil or green. Right there, exactly. Just frying the paste off, like that's the difference between restaurant tasting and home cooking sometimes. It's just little techniques, so good job. Still. Enough time. You really need to fry it well to make sure it doesn't taste bitter. Season this with some ginger powder and black So I've used a lot of Korean fermented bean paste, but never a black bean paste that looks quite like that. And then add some sugar to balance everything out. Second pro tip, use real beef broth. Trust me on this one, please use the natural stuff. Add a cornstarch slurry to thicken up the sauce to your liking. Oh, that's why it looks gelatinous from the slurry. If you really want to make it extra bomb, add some MSG. Okay. I recommend okay. reducing the boiling time for your noodles by about a minute and then to assemble. Another nice tip. Assemble, just add a little drizzle of sesame oil and garnish with cucumbers and sesame seeds. Oh, so I've made so many different Korean dishes over the last five years. Obviously, Korean food is, you know, it's hot right now, but this is new for me. So this is a really interesting dish 
dish because it originated from Chinese immigrants actually making this in Korea, which is why you see the dish made with a Chinese ingredient like black bean paste. But it's become so widespread and popular in Korea because it's approachable. It's pretty easy to make as long as you have this black bean paste. And I went extra. I got the actual jajamian noodles. These are basically just Korean fresh wheat noodles. So very similar to udon, just a little bit thinner, which hopefully should make this taste even more authentic. So first, just like the last recipe, let's get the water on. And again, I'm just using a big old 12 inch nonstick. So what I'm gonna do is follow Stella's tips on this pork belly. So first I'm going to slice it up into thin pieces and then I'll score it on both sides. So that was a pretty cool technique. Never done anything like that. We've got scored and chunked up pieces of pork belly. This shouldn't need any fat because there's plenty of fat on the pork belly. That should render off. And while that's frying, I'll work on my vegetables. And I'm gonna follow the exact veggie selection that Stella had in her recipe, but she does mention in her blog that mushrooms and onions are the most authentic. You can use any veg that you want. So first up, the cabbage will get a nice rough chop, then pretty much the same type of rough chop on the onion. And for both the potatoes and zucchini, I'm gonna give them a nice cube and they're gonna slow cook in the sauce and get nice and tender. All right, we've got some nice color working on that pork belly. So she went in with the, oh, I got it all mixed up in here. Oh boy. Onions first, pick through this. Not the best way to prep your veggies. And then this was quick, but I think she also threw in the potatoes with the onion. All right, so this has been cooking, but it's looking a little dry. So I'm just gonna hit it with a little bit more oil, and then we'll go in with final veg, zucchini, cabbage, a lot of veg in this dish, which I really appreciate. Wow, gotta cook that down a bit. All right, now I have not added any salt to this. It's very unlike my cooking, but I'm gonna trust her at this point. I think we'll have enough seasoning in the sauce. So we're ready to move on to this sauce action. So the term jajamyeong, if you break it up, jajang translates to fried sauce, which is the main sort of technique she focused on in her TikTok. We make a little well here, we add our oil, and then she went in with about a half a cup of the good stuff. I would say that's about right. And she fried that up for three minutes, saying that if you don't, your sauce is gonna be bitter. In the meantime, I can do a few things. Make a quick slurry, two tablespoons cornstarch, four tablespoons water. Cornstarch slurry ready to go. Continue frying that. She sliced up a little cucumber garnish. I'll do that real quick. Now we mix up everything. She added a little bit of sugar. She had ginger powder. I'm just gonna grate in some fresh ginger because that's what I have. And final spice, just some black pepper. Kind of similar vibes to the chow mein, which of course is Chinese as well. Picking up on very similar vibes. Okay, now star of the show, other than the black bean paste. Got some jiggly beef broth that I made yesterday. She specifically mentioned you gotta use the homemade stuff, which I'm not fighting her on that. I took some beef knuckles yesterday, roasted them off, took them down for about 12 hours. And look at this, look at that collagen. That, that's the real stuff, my friends. You don't get that in a freaking plastic container. That was two cups. Whoa, this is all new to me. Very exciting here. Yeah, now to make Uncle Roger happy, he does say optional MSG. Let's give it a shot, a little sprinkle of that. All right, we've got a light boil on this. I'm just gonna taste it. Holy shit. That is, that's pungent. That is good. That black bean paste, funky and dynamic, but we definitely need some slur. Get our slurry game on. And while that, oh, that's getting thick right away. Let's turn it down and we'll get our noodles going. Wow, these are nice. Look at those. Three to four minutes. Wow, look at these. Those are definitely done. Get those a drain out and then check this out. This has to be the most unique noodle dish I've ever made. I think we're looking great on that consistency. All right, to plate it, we went on with the nudes. Big mound of noodles. Big old ladle of this on one side. Wow. On her blog, she mentions a garnish of sesame oil, sesame seeds, fresh cucumber. And things must be really sinking up because last week I made these yellow pickled radish. And she says that is a popular garnish. I mean, look, that is incredible. Love it when you just create something brand 
new, at least for me. I mean, that is just a stunningly unique noodle dish right there. I gotta get a little mixy action going. Whoa, that mix is nice in there. Sort of slops up those noodles. I guess that's why she served it right on top. It incorporates so easily. Mm. That's why I hate food shows that give you so much energy on that first bite. This dish definitely takes a few bites to kind of get into the core of it and really understand it. The garnish is essential because it's heavy. These noodles are salty and the freshness of the cucumber and the pickle, it's perfect. I mean, these noodles are fully coated and just perfectly chewy. So I might've butchered some of the terminology. I appreciate you sticking with me on that. But I think I did a pretty good job first run through. This is one of the most, maybe the most unique noodle dishes I've ever had. Everything just sort of works in unison. That pork belly is incredible. Stellan Spice, thank you for these tips. Definitely Pro Home Cooks approved. All right, so we've got vermicelli miso Bone broth? That's a little confusing to me, but let's give it a try. Flick of the whisk, 839K. What was that intro? <laughs> I'm so confused. Okay, this is like some interesting storytelling on TikTok. If I'm interpreting this right, she just took a bite and we're kind of hearing her reaction to it. <laughs> But then at the same time, we didn't see the bite happen, so we don't know. So you just hear this weird sound effect, but let's let's get into it. Okay, no, no narration. That looks like hot mustard, not miso <laughs> to me. I've never seen miso like that. All right. Okay. I just made something very similar to this, just miso and chicken stock. Anticipation. Chili oil, solid. A little aromatic oil on top. Love it. A little fresh garnish. I mean, that knife could probably use a little, eh, I could use a little sharpen. Look at, look at this smash. <gasps> I, her knife skills are good. She just needs a sharper knife. Oh yeah, girl, get after it. Little, little fresh lime. I mean, I can, balance of flavors is, is working here really well. To me, it almost has some pho qualities to it, especially with the lime, the lightness of everything. Okay, now we'll see her actual reaction slurp and chew. Whoa, 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 whoa. So I've never made anything quite like this, but this type of noodle dish is right up my alley. So I can't really call this one uh, pho, can't call it ramen. Uh, to be honest, this is kind of how I craft noodles. It's sort of a combination of a lot of things. And what I really like about it is that it's super light and we've had a lot of heavy noodle dishes so far. So it's a good way to end. <laughs> There's like three ingredients. We're gonna get a little saucepan on a medium heat. Oh not do that. Now here's the rest of the beef stock from the second recipe. And again, having a homemade beef stock is really what's gonna do you in for this one. I'm just making one bowl. So just enough beef stock to fill up a bowl of noodles. All right, heating that up. Outside of the beef stock, the key to this recipe are these vermicelli noodles right here. These are instant, which is what we need. See how thin they are. I don't know how they make these if they're like pre-cooked, but by just pouring over the hot broth, we should be good. So beef broth, base of pho, but Rather than adding aromatics, we're gonna add miso. This is a homemade creamy miso, six months fermented. I'll add about two nice scoops of that. Just bring that up to a very light simmer. All right, so she said choice of protein. I just actually have the leftover little bits from cooking down the stock. I don't know what she used. Some type of vegetarian like protein thing. That looks great actually. In with the vermicelli noodles and we're already boiling here. Oh. I need a whisk, put a dough whisk. Pour over, let that sit for five minutes. God, I've used so many scallions today. This is all I have left. <laughs> and remember my friends, sharp knife when you're cutting scallions. Just enough scallions. Cut this lime in half. Finally, some chili. We'll just wait about two more minutes. All right, 
Five minutes. Those look cooked to me. That chili oil in there, which is so much aromatic flavor. And this lime is where it gets really pho-like. So interesting with these flavors. And then finally, that's it. That is it. That looks awesome. My friends, I'm kind of freaking out. This looks so good. I'm hoping for a smash hit that I'm making every week. That's what I'm feeling. But you never know until you taste. And she like made love to her noodles. Maybe, maybe there's a reason for that. No veggies, I just realized that. Hmm. Whoa. It's almost a little confusing at first. I'm still a little confused because you are really mashing up a Japanese miso style soup with a pho. <laughs> it's like the perfect mashup of the two and my brain is like having a little bit of trouble comprehending. The lime and the chili oil definitely cut through the heaviness of the beef broth and this soup, just like a pho, feels very light, which is a big bonus for me. Something I could eat all the time. She's onto something. <laughs> I don't know if she created this or Herself. I mean, it's very unique. So I'm guessing she was the inventor. I think I need my own space here. We're gonna turn off the camera. No, I'm just joking. All right, that's gonna get the first ever five out of five spatulas. That is incredible. So unique. I don't hate that there aren't veggies in here. It's actually holding up with just the simplicity and a little beef chunk here and there. Wow, great way to finish off these noodle recipes. I definitely am feeling inspired. That was awesome. I set out to learn new techniques, experience new flavors, and I certainly got my wish. And hopefully you learned a thing or two as well. If you wanna check out more of the viral series, click this video right here, and I'll see you in the next video.